Why did Jesus choose not to marry Mary Magdalene? Marriage is considered a sacred undertaking ordained by God, and the union between a man and his wife is a fundamental principle in the Christian experience. Although Jesus demonstrated support for marriage by attending a wedding ceremony and performing his first miracle there, he himself did not enter into matrimony. This raises questions about his marital status and whether he was married to someone else. In this episode, we will delve into these inquiries that have intrigued believers throughout history. The four Gospels provide evidence of Jesus fully embracing his humanity, experiencing various aspects of human life such as hunger, thirst, temptation, pain, suffering, and ultimately, death. However, one significant aspect missing from his life is marriage, which is a profound human experience. The Bible remains silent on Jesus' marital status, prompting us to explore three key questions, was Jesus married? If so, to whom? And if not, why did he choose not to marry? Let's begin with the first question, was Jesus married? This has been a subject of extensive debate among scholars over the years. Some strongly argue that Jesus must have been married, presenting logical reasoning to support their viewpoint. However, it's important to approach this discussion with an open mind, recognizing that logic does not always equate to truth. Here are the reasons scholars propose to support the idea that Jesus was married. 1. Cultural context. In the first century Jewish culture, it was customary and expected for Jewish men to marry. Considering that Jesus himself was a practicing Jew, some scholars contend that it would have been unusual for him to remain unmarried, given the social norms of that time. 2. Gnostic Gospels. When referring to the Bible's silence on Jesus' marital status, I was specifically referring to the canonical Bible, as defined by the Nicene Creed in 325 AD under Emperor Constantine's direction at the Ecumenical Council of the Catholic Church. However, this canon did not include all the existing scriptures of that time. Numerous documents that addressed the earthly life of Christ were intentionally excluded from the established Bible. Moreover, such documents were banned, destroyed, and those found with them faced severe punishment. As expected, many early followers of Christ disagreed with these omissions and resorted to hiding these documents in caves and other secret locations, passing them down from one generation to another. Consequently, several of these documents were lost until recently. In recent decades, a significant number of these hidden documents have been unintentionally discovered, often found in caves and other concealed locations. These non-canonical Gnostic texts, unearthed over time, include the Gospel of Philip, which indirectly suggests a close bond between Jesus and one of his female disciples. However, it's important to note that like the canonical Gospels, the Gnostic Gospels were written many years, and sometimes centuries, after Jesus' death. 3. One argument proposed by scholars is that Jesus' preaching in the synagogue indicates his marital status. Some argue that only men of status were allowed to preach in synagogues, and marriage was considered a means of gaining status during that era. However, it's crucial to highlight that there is no historical evidence or explicit requirement during Jesus' time that preaching in a synagogue necessitated marriage. Synagogues served as places of worship, study, and community gatherings, playing a significant role in the religious and social life of Jewish communities. For another point raised is that early Christianity did not universally mandate celibacy for its leaders, unlike certain Christian traditions. Jesus himself did not require his followers to be celibate. Some scholars argue that if Jesus intended to establish a new religious movement, 
Being married would have aligned with the cultural norms of that time. 5. Furthermore, certain scholars suggest that the canonical Gospels might have omitted details about Jesus' personal life, including his marital status, in order to prioritize his theological teachings and mission. These Gospels were written several decades after Jesus' death, and it is proposed that certain aspects of his life may have been overlooked or downplayed over time. For instance, it is believed that the Gospel of Mark was likely the first to be written, around 65 to 70 AD. Following that, the Gospel of Matthew was likely composed between 70 and 85 AD, drawing influence from the Gospel of Mark and other sources. The Gospel of Luke is generally dated between 80 and 90 AD, and like Matthew, it also incorporated elements from the Gospel of Mark and other traditions during its composition. The Gospel of John is thought to have been written last, around 90 to 100 AD or even later. Due to the considerable time gap between Jesus' death and the writing of these Gospels, some scholars argue that certain details about Jesus' life, particularly those unrelated to his ministry, may have been omitted. As we can see, the reasons put forth in support of the argument that Jesus was married are logically sound. Now, let's examine the disciple who is claimed to have been married to Jesus. Although the canonical Gospels do not provide corroboration, the Gospel of Philip mentions Mary Magdalene as the female disciple who shared a close relationship with Jesus. This closeness is also apparent when reading the four canonical Gospels. In the Bible, Mary Magdalene is esteemed as the Apostle of Apostles, since she was the first to witness Jesus after his resurrection. The Bible records that Jesus instructed her to inform the others of his resurrection. In the Gospel of Philip, it is mentioned that the Apostles witnessed Jesus kissing Mary Magdalene on the mouth but this should not be taken literally. The Hebrew word for kiss is nashak, which was a common cultural practice meaning to commune or greet. The gospel also refers to Mary as Jesus' companion, using a Greek word that implies a shared goal rather than necessarily indicating a spouse or partner. In another non-canonical text, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Apostles noted that Jesus loved Mary more than other women. While the wording is intriguing, it does not necessitate or strongly suggest a marital relationship. Now, let's address the second question, despite the logical arguments presented thus far. Is it conclusive that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene? The answer is no, and the reason is quite simple. It is not stated in the canonical Gospels that Jesus was married or specifically married to Mary Magdalene. As a Christian, I hold the belief that the canonical Gospels are accurate and represent the true scriptures. If Jesus were indeed married, it would have been clearly mentioned in the Bible. Marriage holds such significance in Christianity that it is inconceivable that such a crucial aspect of Jesus' life would have been mistakenly omitted by the numerous authors of the Bible. Some might argue that it could have been a deliberate omission. To that, I ask, for what purpose? The Bible records numerous instances that may be considered embarrassing. So it does not make sense for the marriage of Christ to be intentionally left out, especially when Jesus himself fully supported the institution of marriage. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, Have you not read that he who made them in the first place made them man and woman? It says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Now, let's proceed to the final question, if Jesus was not married, why not? It is true that being married would not necessarily negate Jesus' deity or perfection, 
as marriage is not considered a sin and is ordained by God. However, there would have been significant implications to consider. 1. If Jesus was married, it would mean that he chose one woman on earth to elevate and love above all others. This would present an intriguing theological predicament, as it could be misinterpreted to imply that God loves different individuals to varying degrees. 2. The church is often referred to as the spiritual bride of Jesus. Introducing the concept of Jesus having an earthly bride would create confusion when trying to reconcile his relationship with both an earthly bride and a spiritual bride, undermining the metaphor of the church as the bride of Christ. 3. If Jesus was married, it is likely that he would have had children. This would mean that upon his ascension to heaven, he would have left behind descendants who would be considered part human and part divine. This would raise questions about how this would affect the claim that through Christ, we are all children of God. 4. In marriage, husband and wife are said to become one flesh. If Jesus, who is sinless, married a sinful woman, as all humans are sinners, and they became one flesh, it would raise the question of whether he would then be tainted with sin himself. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Make sure to check out my channel for more videos discussing mysteries of the Bible.